Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Acts. When the temple police had brought the apostles, they had had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in his this name, but here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and, and savior that, we, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 118, verses 14 through 29. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a, there is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall 
The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will, I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now, says Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Born in procession the branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is good for us A reading from Revelations. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from G Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings of the earth to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priest serving his God and Father, to him glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. 
If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter. It's part of our 50 days of feasting to follow our 40 days of fasting in Lent. I think it's a good lesson from the church here that The celebration should always be greater than the fast. But in church terminology, maybe you'll hear today more popularly called uh, Low Sunday, yeah? Everyone's still wallowing in ham and mashed potatoes and a Holy Week hangover and they have a hard time making it to church next week. But this Sunday is also called Doubting Thomas Sunday. Uh, Because every year, the second Sunday of Easter gives us this story in the gospel. It's a full week after Jesus' death. and Mary Magdalene has seen the risen Lord in the garden and recognized him, but no one else has. The disciples are wallowing in their own Holy Week hangover, but theirs is the food of grief. It's a familiar scene to any who have known it. No one's leaving the house. The shutters are drawn to keep out the light. They share cans of cold beans and tins of fruit cocktail, the sort of isolated existence of misery. Except Thomas. Thomas keeps moving. Thomas is an active griever. He's gone out for a run. Thomas is running from everything. He's pacing up and down the streets, glaring at passers-by, silently daring them to say a word and secretly hoping to get into a fight about it. What else does he possibly have to lose? So, Thomas isn't home with the others when Jesus appears among them. And I think, actually, It's pretty understandable that Thomas is dubious when he hears the report that the friend that he saw die was alive again among them. But I guess 2,000 years of church history doesn't agree with me, um, and so he became doubting Thomas, the locus of our worry that our doubts might be all that matter about us. But when I read the Bible, I see something else there. I don't see Jesus being particularly concerned 
with people's doubt. He's concerned with a lot of things. I mean, wealth, anger, greed, insincerity, abuse of power, selfishness, duplicity. Yeah, he's got concerns. But beyond our most obvious of doubting stories today, I think of the story of that agonized father with the sick child who asks Jesus to heal his kid. You remember it? No. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> So there's a father with a sick kid, and he comes up to Jesus and asks for healing. And Jesus says, it's easy. All you have to do is believe. And the man says in tears to him, look, I want to believe. Help my unbelief. I want to believe, he says. It doesn't say he does believe. Desiring belief, not actually believing itself was the thing that was enough. I think that's a really merciful gift to us humans who are so often not the things that we want to be, good or righteous or faithful, that there's something about just the desire to be so that has merit in the eyes of God. The desire to be so that can change the way you live. Jesus doesn't ever harp on about doubts. And the Bible actually seems to want to give you all manner of reasons to doubt in this resurrection story we hear. I don't know if you noticed last week uh, what sort of people were witnesses to the resurrection. Hmm? Women. Women. Women, mm -hmm. those people who are not just property of their husbands, according to the Old Testament, women whose testimony wouldn't hold up in court, women who are hysterical and emotional, and just the last people you'd want to say were the eyewitnesses to the resurrection. It's their story who makes it in, I do not know how, into the pages of our holy book. Then we have four different accounts in the Gospels of what actually happened, and they agree sometimes, but not others. And if this is the central point of what we are as Christians, that, that Jesus died and was risen from the dead, I would think there's a pretty crucial story for agreement upon it. But it's almost like there were a bunch of eyewitnesses who hadn't gotten together to corroborate their stories, to defend them properly in front of reasonable judges like us. Instead, they just throw them all out there, scattered, like, I don't know what you're going to do with this, but this is what I saw. Remarkable. And what they see of the resurrection, you know, it's not that spectacular, all things considered. Jesus shows up and looks different, but they can't really explain how different. They describe someone with a good appetite to eat fish, but someone who also is made of sub such substantial matter that our walls and doors are ghost-like in comparison. He can move through. But that's it, really, that's remarkable. Jesus even still has wounds with him gashes in his hands and feet and side. Not very powerful at all when you look at it. No flawless Apollonic sculpture, but a damaged body, still bearing the wounds of love. Honestly, for Easter, we did it up much better here. Noisemakers and trombones and prosecco, everyone with suits and parted hair. Not even one angel sings in Jesus' return. These aren't stories that you'd want to tell, I think, if you were given the chance to make one up about a dying and rising God, which I find very persuasive on the one hand, considering their basis in truth. But it also gives me hope that an airtight argument for faith 
is really something that the Bible is not interested, interested in giving us. Like, it wants to say that doubts, Thomas's or mine or yours, are not a threat to God. God is large enough to handle them. But don't take them too seriously. Don't give them more weight than they're worth. Hold them lightly and with humility, for they are not the end themselves, but the process by which real faith can grow. You have to keep an eye out for Easter, after all. The place where the least likely tell us surprising good news. Listen to them. At Easter, hope seeps in through doors locked with grief. Embrace it. There's a suffering out there that we witness, that we see with our eyes and do not look away, that we touch with our hands and try not to flinch. Find that, and Easter will be there too. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all the people in their daily lives and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and the unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation especially Maureen, Fred, Ann Curry, Cruz Captiville, Catherine Caulfield, Dorothy Umont, Brenda Arnowitz, Laura, Lucy Chavez, David Jens, Peter and Debbie Baglia and family, Pat and Judy Bull and family, Dawn Greenberg, 
Mark Biavati and family, Jacqueline and Marion, Ginger Holton, Debbie Sadler and family, Carl Caulfield, Betsy Lock Lachlan and family. Hear us, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O oh God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. People, in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace, guys. Welcome everyone. I invite you to find your seat after you have finished greeting your neighbor. Great to be with you this morning, uh, yeah, on the second Sunday of Easter, just a gorgeous day. It's been a long time coming. It seems like we really have turned a corner. Don't let me jinx this. Okay. All right. Um, just a few announcements for you this morning that you'll find in the back of your bulletins. Um, the Christchurch Men's Group wants your information. If you are a guy who wants to be involved uh, with, uh, with this uh, other group of men, then please go ahead and send a quick email to the men's group info at Christchurch. Dot org uh, with your name and contact uh, so that they can get a hold of you as they begin to plan uh, these exciting events to come uh, for their group. Then um, we have made our last selection for this year for the book club uh, for May. Uh, we will be reading God's Trombones, Seven Negro Sermons in Verse by James Weldon Johnson. Uh, so that will be Wednesday, May 18th. Mark your calendars. Plenty of time to read this very slim uh, little volume and uh, to engage in discussion about it. That is all I have for you this morning. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them, and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we see. Whenever you drink it, 
do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, calling in Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Passover is sacrificed for us. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.